So um, I've already welcomed you, um, and welcome to Sanby, and welcome to South Africa and Cape Town, and welcome to Kirstenbosch National Botanical Garden. It used to be the head office of the Biodiversity Institute for many years, and about eight years ago, the head office moved to Pretoria, in the Pretoria National Botanical Garden. It is one of nine National Botanical Gardens, uh, of which we are just about to move to 11, one in the Eastern Cape and one in Limpopo. So we're a growing institution. And of course, I've talked about the Cape Floristic Kingdom. Then, just to tell you that Sanby is a public entity under the Department of Environmental Affairs. And I wanted to just, I've just put it in my presentation now because I wanted to say that is one of the ways or one of the roots of creating an institution is for a institution to be created underneath, a, under a state department like ours. So we are an organization that grew on the foundation of a very old organization called the National Botanical Institute that did basically plant conservation and research on flora. And in 2004, with the passing of the National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act, it created SANBI on the foundation of an old organization. Another route, I think, to creating an institution in, in this sector. Uh, so we are, as I say, we, we, we do, we're an we're a, we're a odd organization because we are based on another organization. We like the National Botanical Institute, NBI, then the Act came and basically the Act expanded the role of NBI from a botanical institute to a biodiversity institute. Luckily they both start with B. So it didn't require much change in the logos and the branding. Just change the word botanical to biodiversity. So we run these nine gardens going on 11. And these gardens are windows, that for us, like windows into the different ecosystems and biomes of South Africa, which is why we are going towards 11 now, so that we can be completely representative of all the different biomes and ecosystems of the country. And it's a good, simple way of displaying these biomes if they are geographically in these areas. So that's the one good, one side of our split personality. The other side of our split personality is that we are a science institution. We generate knowledge. Uh, we are very lucky in South Africa because we have 25 or 30 other institutions, particularly academic institutions, who also focus on research and, and knowledge generation. And so instead of us building an empire and competing with these other 25, 30 excellent institutions, many of them are state funded, some of them are not state funded. Many of them are academic institutions or connected to academic institutions, like the Animal Demography, the Demography Unit. So while we have do knowledge generation, and we have got scientists who do knowledge generation on our books, over the years, and you know, this is a, it's a, it's a tightrope you walk, over the years, we have more developed capacity to manage and have partnerships and relationships. And it's a very difficult transformation to make. Because like you uh, from the Congo, who's a zoologist and a scientist and passionate about that, it's a very different skill set to now gather other zoologists together 
and to make an agenda for zoologists to research in your country. It's a different set of skills. So we have been moving towards that set of skills over the last few years. While not wanting to lose your science research capacity. Because if you, not, if you don't have good science capacity, then you lose respect from those who are in the pure science field. So this is an interesting area that we have been going through in the last few years about where do you put the emphasis on knowledge generation, in other words, scientists, PhD, people doing uh, a biodiversity research, to harnessing others who have done it for what you want. And in a developing country where state resources are few, you cannot afford to compete for funds and for money. You, you really must work at a more cooperative model because you're all fighting for a very small pie of money from the state, in my view. So that, that's the model that we've gone on. We've gone with partners. Um, and so in that, as they say, value chain of, of the work we do, the information that we produce, both from our own work and from our partners, is extremely important. And I, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of a model that, that we developed to, just to explain this. You need to have product of this work you do with your state money. And the product needs to talk to those who are in power. If they don't talk to those who are in power and who give you money and give you funds from the state coffers, or even from donors, and if you don't produce the information in a way that people can read and understand, because you're often not dealing with scientists when you deal with money, then you, you will not see, see to be having value, and therefore you will not be able to compete for more funds. So biosystematics, uh, bioinformatics, um, is part of that value chain. It cannot stand on its own. You are, so, and I want, want to talk a little bit about that. It cannot stand on its own. It has a, a fore story and it has a back story. And in between a whole lot of other things. So, we also do what we call, out of this information, we distill and analyze it and we make assessments. And then we, out of those assessments, we monitor the state of biodiversity. And we then provide a report to our minister on the state of biodiversity. And that's all in the act. And it all gives you just that little bit of power and it's useful in an, in an institution building to have that legislative framework that gives you that power. So for example, last year we produced the National Biodiversity Assessment of South Africa. Um, it's a comprehensive research on species, ecosystems, Ecosystems under threat, species under threat, etc., etc., and the, um, we hand it to our minister. Our minister then does policy and decision making and prioritization based on this. So, for example, the information on wetlands is in here, with the result that we have got more money for wetland restoration this year. But it's not simple. I, I, I'm just saying this sounds like a, like, a, like, a, like a fairy tale. But I'm just giving you the pieces of the puzzle that I think needs to be in place for you to, uh, to have status, because that's what we need. Status and standing, importance and relevance. 
because we are all from developing countries and we're all fighting for slice of, of, of a develop, developing country budget. So this is one of the power tools and then out of this we produce a popular version of the National Biodiversity Assessment. This will go to high schools. It's easy enough for high school students to read. And so this, and this report is another report that the minister gets. And then she instructs us to send it out. And it's a very powerful tool, is reporting. And so in building your institution, that formal reporting issue is important. But just back to Sanbi a little bit, our mandate is, is exceptionally wide. Um, and you're very welcome to go and look at the more detail. But we also have invasive alien species management in our, our mandate, legal mandate. We also are mandated to advise government of the impact of GMOs on biodiversity, which is a very difficult and contentious area to deal with. And of course, recently, we have been very involved in climate change, given that the modeling work that this institution has done, mainly with partners, showing that there will be major impact on our biodiversity with climate change, with the increase of temperature and the increase of wetness in some parts of our country. So that's another area of work that we do. So that was the first slide and I've talked for so long. You've got to tell me. <laughs> I, I think some of it I would have covered as I go along. Sorry. So we have a wide mandate. We have about 800 staff. And I wanted to put in here the interns because key to institutions, apart from power, is human, cap human capacity. There's lots of things in between. But you have to sell the case for the sector to young people. Don't expect young people to like our sector. There are lots of other opportunities for young people, or much more exciting options for their careers. So part of building an institution is getting on the road and making this sector, biodiversity sector, environment sector, nature, zoology, biology, botany, exciting for young people. Otherwise, you know, all of us are going to retire and go grey and then who's going to take over? So it's key to, uh, to building an institution. So I wanted to also make a, just a comment. I saw that there are experts and there, there are trainees. And, and I must say, in my experience, many colleagues sitting around the table, particularly from the African continent, and I think we're an exception because we, in some kind of odd way, have been very, very lucky to inherit, in a strange way, an apartheid view of biodiversity. Where, and I'll talk a little bit about that, about the conservation view. So with the result that the old state actually built up huge uh, infrastructure and in a strange kind of way, capacity, for conservation and biodiversity and nature and we inherit it in the democratic state of South Africa. And I think our, our role must be to one, maintain it and two, to make it relevant for development of our country. Whereas in many of your countries, the kind of colonialism that you had left virtually no infrastructure and background to that. So, uh, many of my colleagues say, for example, at Kinshasa uh, uh, Botanical Garden are experts in their own right in working with zero money and achieving a lot. So I wanted to say we are all experts in one way or the other. Um, and certainly uh, I, I'm, my skill set now is no longer biodiversity, but it maybe is talking to the portfolio committee of our parliament and budgets, I think. I'm quite good at those things, but not any more expert in anything else. So, 
sorry about this, it got a little bit fuzzy on the top, but it says National Institutions to Meet Biodiversity Challenges. I wanted to make a summary. You'd think I've made the summary already. Anyway, I talked about where on the value chain you sit in this in this in this concept, and where you you fit in, uh, and we can't have the discussion without seeing where this this process fits in, because it's a very difficult concept. Biodiversity, it's a, it's a complex concept. Uh, it's not nature. It's not zoology and botany. It's uh, a, a whole range of things. So, is it science? Is it about species? Is it about ecosystems? Is it about goods and services to humankind from nature? Is it conservation? You know, in our country, lots of men wearing shorts and boots and tromping through the bush with a rifle, protecting the elephants and the rhinos. Is it about conservation in terms of parks? Is it about conservation of parks, of conservation areas? Is it about wildlife? Is it about rhinos, cycads, threatened species? Is it about life? And the concept of biodiversity is that it's all of the above. And so it is a difficult concept to put over to those who are not in our world. But the re biodiversity resilience in a changing world, which is what we're in, is, is, is it's very important to understand it, to understand the dynamics of it. It is also very important to have veracible science, to have true science, good science, provable science, evidence-based science, evidence-based knowledge. Because if you, if you don't do that, then you can, in one sw swoop, you can, uh, your reputation can be gone, you can be challenged. It, it's one of those areas around science and information and veracity science, provable science, that you make one mistake and the whole house of cards can come down. So for example, if you remember the scandal around the uh, International panel, pla panel on Climate Change, they had done some work on glaciers and it, they proved the work, okay, the work proved to be, sorry, sorry. The work proved to be based on dodgy science. And it actually had a big impact on the International Panel of Climate Change. So the issue of irascible science is, is very important. But in my view, dishing out this information, this science, in a way that policy and decision makers can understand is the most important. Is the most important. So if you work backwards from that then, and if you find that you can't do everything in science, rather do science in prioritized areas that talk to policy and decision makers and do it well and do good work, good evidence-based work, and produce information in a way that, scient that decision makers can understand. And so I, I gave this paper in Trondheim, this is part of my Trondheim paper. I said biodiversity needs to move into the political mainstream. You know, we, we, if you want to win this game, you must stop being greenies, hugging a tree, talking to each other, you know, wearing organic shoes. Because if you want to play seriously, you need to move into the political mainstream. And when I did this paper at the CBD at Trondheim, I looked at two industries, who, how they managed to win the game. How did they become so prominent? I looked at the mining sector and the tourism sector. And the, the one thing that made, I could see that made them powerful is they built institutions. They built 
at the chamber of minds, for example. And you look at the chamber of minds, the work the chamber of minds does, producing information, lobbying, bringing the mining sector together, the mine owners together, 